Hi, it's Coop again. Uh, I have another acquisition that I acquired in the last year. Uh, last December, Matchstick and I went to Japan. And we went there for the Yokohama show that Moon Ice puts on. Uh, he went as a vendor and I went along with him. And the, the first thing we noticed is, as soon as we got into town, there's all these little Japanese vans that are running around everywhere. It seems like everybody's got a, a van in Japan. At the, car, at the car show, we met a couple of guys that had Japanese vans that were customized. Uh, one of them was uh, Hiroshi, who lived in uh, a town outside of, I don't remember the name of it, it was outside of Tokyo. And he invited us up to his shop after the show was over to see his place. He has uh, four of these little vans that he's customized, and he customizes vans for other people. So we were just totally enthralled with the stuff that he had. We took a bunch of pictures, and he wanted to show us one of the vans that he had done. And he took us to uh, Hanoda, I think it is, um, Kanagawa, in Japan, where one of his customers had a really nice little Honda van that he had painted. It's black with flames. It has these accessory kits that you can buy that make it look like an American van. It's got a Dodge grill, Dodge bumper, Dodge taillights. At first glance, you would think it was a Dodge van from the States, but it's about half the size. These were really cool vans. And uh, the owner of this particular van, Hiromi and her husband, uh, were the greatest people we ever met. And they, we, uh, we had a blast at their place. They've got a little uh, uh, shop that sells collectibles, American stuff. Um, Coca-Cola, McDonald's toys, you know, anything Americana, they had it in their store. And they love vans and they love American stuff. So we had a great time visiting with them. And on the way back to uh, the subway, uh, Matchstick and I were talking about these vans. Was, at, at that point, I'm decided I'm, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get one of these vans. So I started checking into it, and I found a, a blog site uh, of a guy in Florida who imports these things for himself. And he had a van, and he's telling in this uh, blog about the process of going through it. And really, it didn't sound all that complicated. So I started checking into it, and I found a company in Japan that you can bid on cars and, and vehicles over there online and I started watching it and they started sending me you know stuff to check out and this little van came up and I ended up buying it at the auction and had it shipped here I bought this in uh, March and it showed up in Baltimore in June it's a Honda or excuse me it's a Subaru um, Sambar van, it's A-M-B-A-R. It, uh, it's what they call a K-van, K-E-I, I think it's how it's spelled. They're designed for the Japanese market, strictly. Uh, they're real small. In order to be considered this type of van, it has to be a certain size, and it has to be a certain horsepower. They're not allowed to go over 80 horsepower, I believe it is. And the, the Japanese uh, used car market is very what they do is they uh, are very strict with used cars over there so you have to keep it up to factory specs and have it inspected every year and if it doesn't meet specs then you know you're not allowed to drive it so it's a lot easier for people to just to sell the things off and get a new car or a new van and so they've got this plethora of used vehicles floating around so they've got to figure out a way to get get them out of the country because they really don't have room for all these vehicles. So they have these companies that are set up to sell them overseas. So they sell them to the States, but they'll sell them places like India and South America and the Bahamas, places like that. So uh, that's how I acquired this thing. It was, it was uh, relatively easy to buy it, but it took quite a bit to get it here. I had to have it transported to the dock. I had to have it shipped on a, on a ship, went to the dock to pick it up, to transport it, the whole bit. But once I got it, I was tickled to death. This van is a 1994 Sambar Subaru. It has a 660 cube, uh, yeah, CC motor in it, which is tiny. It'll go 65 miles an hour if you push it. It'll hold up to four people. 
The thing only weighs about 850 pounds empty. It gets 40 miles of the gallon. It is a blast to drive. And the neatest thing about it is everywhere you go, everybody's just like, what is that? You know, where, where'd you get that? How'd you get it? It's right-hand drive. It's, uh, it's full of truck and stuff. We're here at the Band Nationals. So I've got all kinds of goodies inside of it. One, four comfortable, right? Yeah, it'll seat four people quite comfortably. It's uh, it's a lot of fun to drive. I've got uh, some striping and stuff that I did to it. I, I really haven't done much to this truck other than just clean it up a little bit. Uh, it came uh, in excellent shape for a 25-year-old truck with 100,000 miles on it. Uh, it's in excellent condition. Uh, the funny thing was when I, when I bought it, I got a Japanese title and I took that to the DMV and uh, kind of freaked the ladies out when I handed them a title that was all in Japanese. But I did get a translated copy so I could uh, get all the paperwork. You had to get a, a form from the DOT, you had to get one from EPA, you had a uh, customs uh, form that you had to have, you had to have state in, a state inspection for Ohio and in order to get it. I had to have uh, proof of, of the odometer. I mean, I mean, there's all kinds of goofy stuff that I had to go through. But once I got all the paperwork accumulated, it was it was relatively easy. So. Did, did your insurance company freak out when you tell? told them? Uh, actually, they didn't really didn't seem bother. to make much difference to them. I, they, I put historic tags on it. And uh, as, as a collector vehicle, evidently they've seen these things before. So I just insured it as a, a historical vehicle and had to take pictures of it, obviously, for them. Uh, and other than that, uh, it, was, it was relatively easy. It didn't cost very much. Okay, I've got a technical Looks like you left question. the original plate on the front. Well, I'll tell you, that plate, I, when I was in uh, Japan, that plate came from Hiromi. Uh, she, I, she had a couple of license plates, and that's one of the things I wanted to take home as a souvenir. So I ended up sending her a couple of American license plates in a trade. And she gave me that plate and it actually came off of her van. And it was a special plate that had been issued when uh, they had the World Cup in Japan a few years ago. So I, as, uh, I had to put it on there just for the authenticity. It didn't come with rat pipe, right? No, I've done, I did the striping on it just to dress it up for the, for the nationals and painted it all up. Of course, you know, I've got to have a rat thing on just about everything I own. And uh, so I spent a few hours doing that. Here's the real kicker. Here's the motor. No way. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> oh my God. 660 cc's of raw power. The pistons on this thing must be about that big around. Uh, <laughs> it'll hardly get out of its own way. But I have found out that a lot of these models came with turbochargers on them from the factory that boosts the power up to about 80, uh, 80 horsepower, which is almost double what, it's, what it is right now. Yeah. But the motor's in absolute wonderful condition. All I've done, I've changed the oil. Uh, I have found out that it uses the star same starters, alternators, and th those kind of uh, parts that the, most of the Subarus that are here use. So I can go to the parts store and buy parts for it, you know, that kind of stuff, belts, you know, spark plugs, and all that kind of stuff is relatively easy. There's also a couple of companies out west that specialize in these little micro trucks that I can get just about any part of it that I want. So it's getting parts for it is not going to be that difficult. It has 12 inch tires on it. Uh, they're tiny, but I found out also from the guys in Japan that you can get uh, custom wheels for it. Uh, and you can put up to 13 inch wheels on it with the right size tire and they really look good with custom wheels on them. I will eventually probably paint the truck, do something else with, different with it, but I'm having a lot of fun with it right now. And so it's probably going to stay the way it is for a while. <laughs> this is my club, Vans on the Run. 
club member in Japanese. <laughs> Had it translated and I lettered it on the truck. Mm. On the other side it says Ratfink in Japanese on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, un underneath the Ratfink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Japanese lettering. One of my uh, goals is uh, to try and learn a little bit of Japanese. We're going to go back to the uh, Yokohama show again this year uh, and, and go back and see all the people that we saw when we were over there. There's a lot of van activity in Japan. Uh, there were some van people that we met over there that we want to go back and visit. We never had a chance to see them while we were there. So it's just a good excuse to go back. Yeah. So we're going to have fun.